So I'm gonna show you one thing that's gonna elevate your bloomer above anything that you can buy in the store. So if it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Philip. Now I'm not gonna be making a quick dough today. I'm gonna be making a dough that uses a poolish, which is an overnight fermentation. I'm gonna make it the night before, but it only takes five minutes, but it's gonna drastically improve both the flavor and the texture of our bread. Now this recipe makes enough dough to make two bloomers. If you wanna cut it in half then, fill your boots, that's no problem at all. And the full recipe details will be on the website, which is linked in the description below. Now the night before or 12 hours before you're ready to make the main dough, you're gonna to mix together 290 grams of water, 290 grams of strong bread flour and 1.5 grams of yeast. You're gonna bring that together with a spoon. It doesn't need to be smooth. The overnight fermentation is gonna take care of all of that. So this is gonna make about 1.5 kilos of dough. So just make sure you choose a bowl that's large enough to take the poolish and the ingredients that we're gonna to add tomorrow. Now my kitchen's around 18 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is gonna be perfectly happy, bubbling away overnight. But if you've got a super hot kitchen and you wanna slow this down slightly, then you can put it in the fridge. But just remember that things are gonna take a lot longer. So cover your container, tuck it up for the night, and you can sleep soundly knowing that the investment in time is gonna work wonders for our dough. So if your Polish has only been fermenting for 10 hours or perhaps it's gone a bit longer for 15, don't stress, that's gonna be absolutely fine. As long as it looks like this, you are gonna be good to go. Now you can see we've got some good initial gluten development. The dough smells lovely, it's slightly acidic and a little bit fruity, but it doesn't smell really strongly of commercial yeast. So the final dough isn't gonna prove in a basket or a tin, it's gonna prove unsupported. So we're gonna shoot for a hydration of 60%. That's gonna give us a nice firm dough that won't collapse during that final proof. Now if you're new to handling dough then I'll link to a video up in the card above and down in the description that's going to help you out. Add 250 grams of room temperature water to the poolish followed by 18 grams of salt, 610 grams of strong bread flour and finally three grams of yeast. Bring everything together into a rough dough. It doesn't need to be smooth at this stage. Cover it and leave it out on the worktop at room temperature covered for 20 to 30 minutes. Turn the dough out onto the work surface without any bench flour and you'll feel how that little rest has made the dough a lot easier to work with. Now we're gonna give the dough a knead for five to 10 minutes until everything feels really well incorporated. Now we haven't used too much yeast, so we're gonna build strength in the dough during this longer proof. Bring the dough into a ball, cover it and leave it alone for five minutes. When you come back to it, the dough should now feel silky smooth and a lot more pliable, just generally easier to handle. Now you can use a little vegetable oil on your container and this is gonna stop the dough sticking when we come to remove it. Shape the dough into a ball. This can now be covered and left to prove again at room temperature. Now my kitchen is 18 degrees Celsius and this dough took two hours and 15 minutes to prove. And you can see that we've got a really nice tight structure and the dough's really well risen. So flip the dough out onto the bench. Now you shouldn't need any bench flour. If you wanna use a little bit, then make sure it's just a touch, but this isn't a sticky dough. Now I'm gonna divide the batch into two. I weigh it for accuracy and to feed my OCD, but you can eyeball it if you prefer. Now we'll give the dough a quick pre-shape by rolling it up into a ball and creating tension on that surface. We're gonna leave it to rest, covered for 10 minutes, and this is gonna give that dough time to relax. Now we can shape this into a bloomer. We're gonna pull the dough out into a rough circle or a rectangle. We're gonna fold the edges over and push the dough down into a longer rectangle. Now starting at the furthest point away from you, Roll the dough over onto itself and using your thumbs across the width of that dough, push the coil of dough forward. Imagine you're pushing the dough into itself and kind of inflating the shape that you're creating. Now I tend to tidy up the ends as I go, but it's not essential. Now it's actually a bit trickier shaping a lower hydration dough as it's a little stiff and it's not as easy to manipulate. But when you get to the end, you're gonna wind up with a seam and that seam needs to be sealed down by pressure. Now you can do this by pushing it against the bench or pinching it with your fingers. Just tidy the dough up and you're done with the shaping. So now you've got a choice to make. You can either dust the top of the loaf with some flour, sprinkle it with poppy seeds, or in fact, you could use some nigella seeds. I'm gonna use poppy seeds and I'm gonna mist the top of the dough slightly with water. That's gonna help those seeds stick, but it's also gonna help the dough stay moist during that final prove. 
Now this is quite a tight dough and I'm going to score it now so the surface tension won't stop the dough expanding during the final prove. It's just going to give it a bit more room to expand. Lift the dough up and pop it onto some non-stick baking paper, cover and prove at room temperature. So the dough took an hour to prove and it feels really nice and soft, it's lost that tension, it feels gassy but it definitely doesn't feel that it's at the point of collapsing and visually we can see that this has grown nicely in size so it's ready to bake. So crucially I'm going to score the dough again and I'm going to follow the previous cuts but I'm just going to nick the surface, I'm not going to go too deep at all. Now this is quite important because when the dough hits the heat it's still going to spring and when it springs we want to make sure that it opens where we want it to and not burst open in random areas. So this is going to bake in an oven that's been preheated to 250 degrees Celsius or 480 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to mist the inside of this big casserole pot. It's going to sit over the top of the loaf and it's going to create steam as it bakes. Now you just need to transport that dough carefully and pop it onto the baking stone. Invert the pot, pop it over the top and this is going to bake at 250 degrees Celsius for the first 15 minutes. Then we're going to remove the pot but we're going to knock the temperature down to 220 degrees Celsius and it's going to take about another 15 to 20 minutes to bake and we're looking for that nice golden colour. Now if you don't have a baking stone and a casserole pot you can bake it on the oven shelf, it's no problem. Set the oven shelf about a third of the way up the oven Heat a baking tray in the bottom of the oven, right at the very bottom, and then when you slide the dough in, just put a small espresso cup full of water in that baking tray, and that's going to create steam. You're going to bake it for about 30 minutes again, but you're going to bake it on 220 degrees Celsius. So did you spot anything during this process that you change? There is definitely one thing that could be tweaked, and I'll tell you what that is in one shake. Now we've got a beautiful crusty loaf but it's not really thick and hard to eat, it's kind of got this crackly crust and in my opinion the poolish really helps with that. So we use thyme to develop this dough so it doesn't taste overly of commercial yeast and those poppy seeds add a really distinctive flavour on that crust. So the crumb's got a great texture, it's not open, we're not looking for that in a bloomer but it's not too tight either and it is beautifully soft. So the colour's good, so we know the temperature and the duration of cooking was pretty much spot on. But did you notice that during the shaping process the dough was tearing ever so slightly on the outside? Now it might have been tricky to see, but I think that dough was just a touch dry. When I did the initial test bake, I baked this at 65% hydration and I think the dough was a little bit slack and it just spread out a touch too much for me during the final proof. So I knocked it down to 60%, but I think for my flour sweet spot, 62% would have been perfect. So I think it's really important to assess that final loaf and find out what we'll tweak next time. Well, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.